I'd like to welcome you to the official ribbon cutting ceremony to unveil our fabulous new KeyBank Art House at Edgewater. <laughs> this project has been a long time coming and a lot of planning the works and um, the one thing we really wanted to make sure wasn't going to happen today was rain. So. Uh, We'll see. I'm glad that some of you brought umbrellas. So um, two quick stories though, I want to share with you about uh, our art program and our, our art history here at the Resource Center. And, you know, next month we're going to observe our 65th anniversary as an organization supporting people with disabilities in our community. And art has been a major focus of those supports ever since we started. And I was doing a little research and back in 1969, the Ark of the United States, which is the national organization that advocates on behalf of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, held a holiday card design contest. And we had a woman named Rita who uh, received supports from the Resource Center for more than 40 years. She was a very good artist and submitted several designs for this national competition. And the judges disqualified her artwork because she said it was too good and that the public would never believe that it was made by somebody who had an intellectual disability, if you can believe that. So uh, fortunately, the positive ending of that story is that Rita's artwork ended up being displayed in the Lincoln Center and also on the Today TV show. So that was at least something for her. Um, more recently, 15 years ago, uh, a gentleman named Doug up in our Dunkirk Day program. The program was having an art show and Doug's sister came down with her nieces and um, wanted to see Doug's artwork and didn't know what to expect because he had never shown any sort of artistic ability and she was just blown away when she saw the artwork that Doug had created. And uh, so much so that she started crying and just couldn't believe it because Doug had uh, never exhibited any, uh, any signs that he was an artist. And um, when she would ask him about his art program and what he did the art program, he said, no, nah, I, don't, I don't really do much. Um, so just talks a little bit about the power of art and that uh, particularly for people with disabilities who we support, who maybe don't get an opportunity to shine in other areas, they can display the talent that they possess through their artwork. And uh, with this fabulous new art program, we're gonna be able to let a lot more people be able to show off their creative side. So thank you guys all for coming. Uh, we're going to make these speeches short and sweet. So first up, I'm going to have our uh, Chief Executive Officer, Denise Jones, come and talk. Denise? Wow. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. I think this whole um, art house and art project really exemplifies how our community pulls together, from funders to board members, to our staff that really all contributed to making this happen for our artists and all the people that we support. Um, such an exciting today to, day today to see this all kick off the ground. So thank you to everyone. And without further ado, I am going to introduce the woman who inspires so many of our artists and really brings out the talent in those folks. And that is Susan Gutierrez our uh, art instructor. And I'm also going to ask one of our artists, Maria Jacobson, to come up as well. Hi, Maria. How are you? Good. It's just an honor today to have everybody here. Um, I'm privileged every day and humbled to be able to work with, to be able to work with the artists at the Resource Center. It is truly a dream job. I can't, there's nothing, nothing better. So thank you to all of you. Can you say something? Why don't you tell them what you like to do? Maria is one of the artists at the Resource Center, and Jocelyn, I'm sure, and Tanisha um, are all artists that attend the day program and come to the art room. Um, but Maria wanted to say a few things that she likes to do in the art room. Um, and uh, actually, there's a few things inside that she has made as well, so you'll be able to see them in a little bit. But thank you all. Forever grateful. Thank you. What do you want to say? Do you want to say something that you like to do? All right. Sorry, Go ahead. Well, I like to do like painting and do my my web and blazes and um, and I like uh, I like art so much. And mom and dad, thanks so much for coming down. <laughs> I love you, Mom and Dad. Find out my heart. 
good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You good? Mm -hmm. Want to say anything more? Mm -hmm. Alyssa, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for being down here today. <laughs> and you too, McKenzie. Hey, Maria, Maria, don't run away, because I, I need you and I need you and Susan to help me out here, okay? Because we are going to be presenting some gifts to a few of our financial supporters on this project. So if you two wouldn't mind handing out those gifts. The first. So, do you want to say the names too? Yeah, uh, I'll do the other, I'll do the rest of them. Oh, we're great. Have all okay. them to speak up. But do you have Dory's gift? No. So, our first gift we were giving to is to Dory, um, and for absolutely everything that you've done throughout the years, um, to show our appreciation, Austin has made a painting for you. Um, and he continued to work on it. It says mom several times, and there's a lot of paint on it. <laughs> so it wasn't quite ready to come over here. Um, but it may be here before we're done today. He worked really hard on it, so he's excited to have it for you. So thank you. So just a little bit about Dory, right? So organizations like ours, we all need guardian angels, okay? And those could be uh, people in the community, uh, elected officials, uh, family members, and they help us out by uh, maybe doing some behind the scenes work to support our mission, uh, donating money, serving on our boards and committees, volunteering at our special events. So a few years ago, Dory, uh, she would come down to our Step Up for Autism walk every year, and during the first year of the pandemic, we couldn't have it because of COVID. And Dory said, well, why don't I just do my own step up for autism walk and so she did that and dory's little covid walk for autism ended up raising ten thousand dollars and it was so successful that she kept on doing it and it's an annual event now and when dory learned that we needed to raise some more money for the art house she donated a quite significant sum to make sure that we could get this beautiful facility constructed so dory thank you for being our guardian angel and for you do and come on up Um, my, my son has been a resident here for about seven years, and when the pandemic happened, I decided to do something on my own, and I had an autism walk. I um, am a pastry chef, and I work at a country club, so I do a Facebook bake sale that I have very generous friends that order things very last minute. And through that, I've been able to donate a very lot of money um, to, I originally started donating to Step Up for Autism. And then when this happened with you needed more money, then I decided to split the money between Step Up for Autism and um, the Art House. And uh, the country club that I work with, um, I just celebrated my 30th anniversary, so they wanted to do something for me, and um, I asked them to um, ask the members for donations, and they donated $17,000 in two weeks. So that's where I got a lot of my money from, and um, through my walk, that um, if anybody's not doing anything October, I'm sorry, September 23rd, we have our fourth walk coming up at Beaver Island State Park. Um, we have about usually 80 to 100 people. We have a bake sale and we have a um, basket raffle that has about 50 baskets and we have some special raffles and stuff. So um, it's, it's a, a lot, but it's worth it to me and especially when I see something like this. It's really awesome to see. So that's my story. That's it. <laughs> and thank you for this awesome picture. I can't wait to put it on my wall. That one's not yours. Oh. Yours is coming. Oh. I thought you said it wasn't mine. No, yours is still, a, it's so fresh, it's still oh, oh, in the process of being created. So, awesome. Okay, so if you'll notice above me, the name of this facility is the Key Bank art house at Edgewater and uh, Key Bank and First Niagara Foundation made a sig financial contribution to make this 
facility possible. So uh, we're happy to have with us today the Corporate Responsibility Officer for KeyBank, Mr. Chichi Owenwane. And Chichi, would you like to come forward and say a few words, please? Oh, good afternoon or evening. Um, so this is actually what it's all about. It's, it's about community, right? It's about community. And why this is somewhat more personal for me um, is because um, I have a six-year-old that is also autistic. Um, so I, I get it. I get it. And I am so grateful for folks like you who get to work tirelessly to ensure that our children, um, community members, that they are not only seen but also heard. And I think this building here is a reflection of them being seen and heard as well. Uh, Key Bank, First Niagara, we're absolutely thrilled to partner with this organization to bring this to fruition. Um, so I'm grateful for the partnership, but more importantly, I am grateful to all of you out here who are able to stand by organizations like this to make this, these type of dreams come true. So thank you. Thank you, Chi Chi. Um, as uh, I think everybody knows, uh, during the pandemic, the price of things kept increasing, right? And we discovered as we wanted to build this facility that we needed more money to be able to keep paying for the increased price of construction materials. And fortunately, uh, with the help of uh, Mayor Eddie Sundquist and the city of Jamestown, we were able to uh, secure some financial backing from Empire State Development. So here representing Empire State Development uh, is Ms. Karen Utz, who is the Western New York Regional Director, and thank you so much for your support, Karen. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here uh, representing Governor Kathy Hochul and Empire State Development. Uh, just a little story. Uh, when I was in elementary school, which was a very long time ago, uh, we had a new student join us who was very quiet and shy. And as we became friends, I realized that she had really an amazing artistic talent. And I would sit with her and simply watch her draw. And the blank page would become filled with mind-boggling sketches. I remember being mesmerized by what was happening, going from her eye to her mind's eye to her hand to the paper. And later, when we published our little school's newspaper, um, we used an old mimeograph machine, so I'm really dating myself now. The, the, the words were really of no significance in that publication, but everyone looked forward to seeing the artwork that my friend would add onto the stencil. And so I'm sharing this with you because I want to let you know that I learned two things at that time that stayed with me. Uh, one is I have no artistic talent. <laughs> and in fact, I, it was suggested that I wear something brightly colored and some funky earrings and artistic, and here I am in bureaucratic beige. So I was just like, and then secondly, with wonder and amazement, I still enjoy seeing the beauty that artists produce and the way that they can communicate through their work. To the artists that are here and to those of you that support them, thank you for what you do and for sharing your art with all of us. So everyone here knows that broadening access to art can change lives, communities for the better. That's why the Resource Center and its donors were so passionate about getting this project off the ground. This project also reflects the city of Jamestown's ambitious efforts in waterfront revitalization and community development aimed at creating a vibrant, mixed-use, residential, commercial, and recreational river corridor. Empire State Development has provided the Resource Center with a Regional Council Capital Fund grant to complete this unique product, project. Sorry. Our Western New York Regional Economic Development Council, which includes Mike Metzger, a former Resource Center board member, recognizes placemaking as one of its core strategies. The council is focused on investments that better connect people, create vibrant neighborhoods, and revitalize waterfronts. It's working. More and more people are being drawn to the waterfronts across our region, and our waterfronts have the potential to be tremendous economic drivers. And it's one of the main reasons we supported Art House at Edgewater. 
We're thrilled to provide funding to the Resource Center as it embarks on its next chapter in Jamestown and Chautauqua County. This investment will have a substantial impact on the region's families and community. And I look forward to following Art House at Edgewater's success. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Uh, in the interest of time, I think our we'll, next couple people will have come up. We'll just have them come up and present their uh, gifts and not have them force them to make any speeches, uh, but also providing significant financial support for the Edgewater Art House was the Linnae Foundation and Randy Ordinas, the president, is here. Randy? Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Randy also was formerly the chair of our TRC Foundation, so he's very familiar with what we do. And there, went, where's Cindy Hitchcock? There's Cindy Hitchcock. Uh, Cindy Hitchcock is the vice president of Filling the Gap, which I think gave us our first two grants to get this project rolling. So, Cindy? Thank you. Um, and not that the rest of the financial supporters here aren't worthy of mention, but um, we do have a lot of staff who are here, uh, former staff, and uh, just to note that our employees raised more than $25,000 through their own personal contributions to the art house, which I think is just phenomenal. And then when you add in their family and friends, uh, the family and friends of the people they support, like Dory and our board members, that number goes up to over $50,000, which is really phenomenal. So thank you all. Congratulations. Um, also want to recognize, I do see uh, Julia Niles here from Chautauqua Region Community Foundation. They've raised a significant amount of money through their Give Big CHQ fundraiser. And then where's Sharon Richards? There she is. Sharon uh, has been also a significant uh, contributor. She doesn't look happy that I'm mentioning her. Uh, volunteers at the art program had a sister who was involved with us for many, many years. So thank you all for your support. You all are wonderful. Um, Andy Goodell is here, the assemblyman. Would you like to come up and say a few words? Andy's been a longtime supporter of the Resource Center and our art program. Congratulations for uh, this beautiful facility and more importantly, the impact it'll have on people. And after all, isn't that exactly what we're all about? Making an impact on people. And I had two uh, observations. First, several years ago, I was a beneficiary of a loan from the uh, residents at TRC on the art program. And I took all the art up to Albany, and I put it on the hallways by my office. Now, I will share with you, uh, confidentially, guys, that, that assembly members are not supposed to put things on the wall. And indeed, I got in trouble. One of the other assembly members came up to me and was very upset because I did not have enough art to cover the walls in front of his office. <laughs> the rest were very appreciative. And I am especially appreciative of the artistic ability that the TRC residents show. I am a painter. I paint houses, windowsills, fences. <laughs> but beyond that, I recognize the skill that others have. And reflecting, the re refle <laughs> sorry, um, reflecting uh, the, uh, the, the support of my colleagues in the New York State Assembly as well as, as myself, uh, I brought a certificate of merit. Congratulations, Art House at Edgewater on your grand opening. Uh, what a great impact you'll have on this area and on our residents and all that get to enjoy this asset. Thank you so much. And I'd like to invite our county executive, PJ Wendell, to come up. If 
Thank you, and it truly is an honor to be here. Uh, you know, it's amazing when Steve was talking that there's actually a major called art therapy, and realistically, I think I need a little bit of that some days in my office because uh, a little pencil or, you know, it's amazing now. They have adult coloring books, right? You can go to the, a, a, a bookstore and find pencils or colored pencil sets that allow adults to cover color because it is very therapeutic. But I think what Steve said was most important is the artwork that comes out of indivi uh, from individuals with disabilities is mesmerizing. And sometimes it is so often underrated. But it's such an amazing ability that people have. It doesn't matter, you know, what intellect you are, but it's just a matter if God gives you a creative talent and allows you to share that. I am like the assemblyman. I have no talent. I can paint. Maybe my wife will tell you I splatter too much. Uh, but again, I am in awe at people that can actually draw. I did know one of my predecessors, Jack Glenzer, drew all of the artwork. If he gave you a card, it was personally drawn. I had a contract somebody to do a drawing on a card for me because I just did not have that talent. But it was an amazing gift that Jack had, and I heard about this over the years. So on behalf of myself and the residents of Chautauqua County, I would like to congratulate the Resource Center for the Key Bank Art House at Edgewater. In recognition of this grand opening, a ribbon cutting on August 18th, 2023, the Key Bank Art House at Edgewater will provide an opportunity for indoor and outdoor art classes along with a place to showcase the art. The business investment in this community in Chautauqua County is greatly appreciated, signed by myself, and I look forward to coming down, sitting here by the water and watching everyone create art as I stand in amazement. Thank you. to us, so thank you both very much for taking the time to be here. Did we give a shout out to our board members yet? Well, we've got several members of our board of directors about the Resource Center. I see our President Dick Erickson over there. There are some uh, representatives from uh, Filling the Gaps Board of Directors, so thank you all for being here, and thank you for your ongoing support of this project. Very much appreciated. And also want to thank the isolated and the Commerce for uh, loaning us a sound system today so that you can all hear us. Okay, so that's wonderful. So give yourselves all a round of applause. <laughs> and finally, uh, ask to come up to speak the mayor of Jamestown, Mr. Eddie Sundwick. So welcome everyone. We are very excited to have you here for the grand opening of the Art House at Edgewater. It has been a culmination of hard work by the Resource Center and the many funding, funders, artists, advocates, and everyone else in between that made this happen. You know, I was talking with Denise Jones earlier and how she remembered when she first started here, this was a maintenance garage. But today, it is a place of hope, it is a place of change, it is a place of artistic expression. And it's a place where you can watch the geese roam around this park <laughs> a lot. So I wanted to just uh, thank everyone who's been here today. I do also want to thank Empire State Development that worked with our office and the Resource Center to help fund some of the increased costs and support. I want to thank Governor Hochul for her support of this project. And I also want to just shout out our Department of Development as well as Paula Pichon, who is the grant writer for the city of Jamestown, who this was her first grant when she took over the position. And look at it now. So Paula, <laughs> this only adds to the millions of dollars of investment happening, happening right here in this neighborhood. Not only do you have this Edgewater House art community but across the street, you're getting a revitalized building. Down the road, you have the water and the river walk. Right down the road, you have the rest of the resource center. So much is happening right here in an area that was once just considered industrial has now changed to a place of community hope and support. 
And those are the types of things we're doing in Jamestown right now. We're rechanging our neighborhoods, we're changing the way we do business, and we could not do that without the support of each and every one of you, and today especially, the Resource Center, for being an anchor for this work and giving every person, no matter your ability, no matter who you are, the chance to express yourself. So on behalf of the city of Jamestown, all its residents, and I mentioned the geese, um, we are very excited to be able to do it, and I can't wait to be able to come and paint with you all soon. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mayor. All right, so that wraps up our speeches. We're going to do a ribbon cutting, and then um, everybody, feel free to please come in and enjoy some refreshments. Uh, if you want to talk to Susan about what's going to be going on in this beautiful art space, uh, we'd be happy to answer those questions. And we, as the Mayor said, we hope that we will see a lot of people coming down here from the community to help enjoy this beautiful new facility. Thank you all so much for your time, and uh, have a great weekend. If you want the top. <laughs> Mr. Erickson, would you like to be in the picture? Take a few photos first. So you Steve, could you touch the left? Absolutely. Absolutely.